what's going on guys welcome back to the channel welcome back i told you guys i was gonna do this review separately this is the review for vikings the entire thing now that it's over this is the review of the entire series i'm gonna go the way i'm going to structure this um is in the way of this you guys know my three point of views that I look at when I review a series or a season of a series, it's the same thing I look at here. You know what I'm saying? Before I give my final rating of this series overall, okay, we look at three things. Okay, we look at the visuals, you know what I'm saying? Or videography, if you will, the, the cinematics, right? Special effects, all that good stuff. Right, then we look at the sound, you know what I'm saying? Do they have great timing with their original soundtracks? You know what I'm saying? Um, and the last and probably the most important, the rewatchability. Did it live up to the hype? Is this something I would recommend to other people to watch? Is it something that you will sit through again and watch with somebody else? You know, or just watch with somebody. Is that how you come back to watch reactions? What is the rewatchability rating for me? Just having somebody else watch it, see what their perspective is on the show. If I would watch somebody else react to the show, that is what rewatchability is. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Guys, I do not edit my reviews they're off the cuff they're what i'm thinking right here as i'm sitting in this there's no cuts no nothing that is what my reviews are so if you hear a lot of uh mm, uh let's see or something of the sort or you know what i'm saying or anything like that i don't cut stuff like that out of my reviews because i want it to be as authentic as possible if you want to see Reviews like that where people have time to sit down and edit themselves after they're done finished talking for an hour to cut it down to 30 minutes, go watch those channels. This is not one of those channels, okay? So if I end up talking for 40 minutes, you're going to have to sit through it for 40 minutes if you enjoy my reviews, that is. So let's get to it, man. So overall, this series, right, was a very good series it was a very good series in my opinion vikings because of the final two seasons of this series it really dropped it in out of my top 10 series of all times you get what i'm saying like because of the last two seasons and a lot of the stuff was jumbled it didn't really make sense narrative wise um, yes, characters had great character moments, but if you have a bunch of characters that have great character moments, but you don't have a story that's comprehensive and con continually showing me the content, the content, I'm having trouble saying this word, <laughs> continuity of the series, it really doesn't make any sense. I believe Vikings hit the peak of of the brilliance of the writing in season four and then it just forgot i don't know if the writers changed i don't know what happened i don't have time to research any of that stuff it's just i'm just telling you what i saw and what i experienced and how i experienced it you guys were, that were along with me for the journey of reacting to the show you saw how i felt about season five you saw how i felt about season six because i'm a very authentic dude i'm not gonna hide my feelings about something because you are here to know what my reaction to it is how do i feel about what's going on and it's not based on preference this is my complete and utterly objective point of view of vikings if i go subjective you're not gonna like what i have to say so let's just go from an objective point of view, we're going to talk about the sound first. Sound design in Vikings was spot on. It was nothing short of perfection. I loved all the OSTs. I have favorites. I actually have 
downloaded the soundtrack and I listened to the Viking soundtrack. The Viking soundtrack is a really good soundtrack to listen to. Look it up. It's on YouTube. A lot of the soundtracks are on YouTube. Great soundtrack. The battle, the 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 battle scene soundtracks. The 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 um. The ones that they play when, you know, when sad stuff is going on and people are getting killed and stuff like that. They did an excellent job. Love the opening for this series also. Nom, 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 da, dum, 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 dum. Nom, nom, da, da, dum, dum, da, da, dum. Yes, you, you've heard enough of that. I'm not going to do the entire thing. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm, I'm a good singer. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I hum stuff really well. So, it's great to know that they had good soundtrack. It fits. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, um, a lot of stuff. I can tell you guys about a lot of stuff that I did not enjoy about this series because I'm just not into that stuff. And I get it. It's probably, like, very authentic to Vikings culture and, and how things were and, you know, what they believe in and stuff like that. But stuff like that, I didn't, that you've probably seen my face when, when you're doing sacrifices and drinking blood and all of this. Other. I know they're not doing that for real. Or were they? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know they're not doing it for real. It's just to stay true to what Vikings were and their culture and what they did and stuff like that. So I understand it. It's not something I'm used to. I'm not a part of that culture. But I do understand why they had to put it there. But it's not part of the show that I enjoyed watching. You get what I'm saying? Not that it took away from anything that I did. From anything I watched, I mean. But... It wasn't an enjoying time for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but in any case, guys, I loved it. I loved the sound in this movie. I don't have much else to say other than the sound design in this. The score of this series was excellent. It was a 10 out of 10 for me. So let's move on to the videography, right? The videography, the cinematics, the special effects. Again, 10 out of 10. They did an excellent job on the cinemat cinematography of the movie, the choreography of this movie, man, was on, movie, of this series, was excellent. It was excellent. It was up there with the likes of, I'm, I can't say Game of Thrones. The reason why I can't say Game of Thrones because Game of Thrones, they just had money to blow. You know what I'm saying? So their special effects was just off the chain. But when I say battle scenes and i've watched a lot of shows on this channel that had battle scenes old timey battle scenes you know what i'm saying when you're talking about um the last kingdom when you're talking about um not that you have last kingdom game of thrones spartacus um is a lot rome you know what I'm saying? That I've watched on this channel. And to see... When you see Vi Vikings... Has the best battle scenes... Of all the shows that I've ever watched... On a TV show level. You get what I'm saying? On a TV show level. I'm not talking about movie level. Because you have too much to choose from when it comes to movies. You know what I'm saying? Um, that have battle scenes that were just off the chain i'm talking about on a tv show level what they have accomplished i think is the best in my opinion their battle scenes were just crazy they were they were believable you get what i'm saying to the point they were so believable to the point where um when when i compare them i like to compare vikings to the last kingdom the last kingdom had some battle scenes. Now, i had a lot to say about those things you know, and I'm like, no, that's not happening. But Vikings just seem to pull off that groundedness when it comes on to the battle scenes. They just seem so visceral and real, like people's heads getting chopped off. You know what I'm saying? People catching axes to chest. You know what I'm saying? Arrows. Everything just looks very realistic. I don't know. I don't think any of that stuff was CG. I don't think any of it. Maybe the background... Of some of it was green screen but i think 
a lot of the Viking battle scenes were shot on site. Like they actually went to a location and choreographed these battle scenes because they just look so real. You know what I'm saying? I can't imagine being a cameraman just in the midst of all this chaos going around, people acting like they're, you know, they're fighting each other, like, you know, the roars and the, and everything and the clanging of the axes and the swords and everything. And I'm just in there like, oh, I got to get, I got to get Vitzerk throwing an axe right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't even imagine what those guys have been through, you know, um, it, 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 it must have been an amazing feeling to be in those positions. You know what I'm saying? So choreography, videography, on point, special effects was on point. It's just, it was great to watch. Now, we're going to get to the rewatchability of the series and there's a lot that's packed into rewatchability because I've got to talk about um the series in itself and this is where we're going to break down the series and why I feel like Vikings is something that I would rewatch again even though season 5 and season 6 was a letdown for me right overall I'm not saying every aspect of it was bad because y'all know how much your boy was crying. You know what I'm saying? I, I was crying a lot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That last... um, the, When when Lagatha... That, that funeral killed me, man. <laughs> like, I don't think I've cried that hard for anything else on this channel. I think that was the most boo-boo face I've ever made on this channel. I've cried. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like... I'm talking about for a show. I've cried on this channel for shows. You know what I'm saying? Like, but not as much as I cry. I don't know, man. Lagatha was just my girl. I didn't want to see her go. You know what I'm saying? It, it was just a special moment for just me and her. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But in any case, I have recovered. <laughs> I have recovered. So let's talk about it. Season 1 through 4 was four of the greatest seasons I've ever watched on TV. We're talking about Ragnar. Ragnar was a character in the show that I felt like was... He was just... He, he protrudes everything that I would love to be if I was a Viking, a chosen leader who didn't want to be a leader. You know what I'm saying? He was, he had these very unique leading qualities about him that you're like, yo, I would like to follow a dude like that in, into battle. You know what I'm saying? Like he know what he doing. The kingship was thrown upon him and he didn't really want it. He was just trying to do the right thing. But because of these good deeds you know what i'm saying taking out the the yarl was it a yarl or earl whatever a yarl whatever they call him right in season one and these this greatness of him wanting to travel just wanting to go see other places thinking differently than other people and then he had his buddy floki that lasts the lasted the entire series and you know what I'm saying? Floki is basically the, the only character that lasted the entire series from literally probably, I, I think he was in episode one of the series to the last episode of the series. I think he's the only one that survived the original group. Bjorn is dead. Ragnar is dead. Lagatha is dead. Um, Ragnar, other son, I mean, his daughter died. I mean, it's, I mean, Lagatha's daughter too, right? Yo, but that's that's what I'm saying though. Like he's the only one. His wife died. Helga died. You know what I'm saying? I want to say Torvi too, but I don't think Torvi was in episode one. I don't think I would have to go back and check, but maybe she was in episode one. I don't remember her from episode one because she would have been as old as Elga or maybe a little bit younger than Elga. If she, I know she was in the first season, but she wasn't 
you know what I'm saying? I don't think she was in episode one. So I'm saying from episode one, I'm pretty sure we met episode met Floki in episode one. So when you're talking about the characters of the series, man, it just makes you want to go back and at least watch those four seasons of this show, those first four seasons. And then I think I I actually think that a lot of stuff that took place in season five and season six pretty much anybody can jump into the series you know pretty much anybody can jump into the series and and it'll be like they're watching a new show because pretty much there's some of the timelines that i would think you know some of the the storylines that you probably would have to know about when they talk about ragnar or they talk about lagoth and stuff like that that you'll probably miss out on um but i think for the most part i think people could jump into the series you know, maybe midway through through season five and just carry along. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it just kind of became a whole different show. Um, so I talk about the narrative a lot in this show and how people has come at me since I've been talking about season five and six of how they completely forgot what was going on. The time skip caught me off guard. Um... It was I. I have a, a huge issue with it. It's just the, t the time skip that happened. It caught me off guard because I'm like, okay, they want to go into the Ivar storyline, right? So fine. You get what I'm saying? So fine. I was rocking with the entire thing. You know, Ragnar was missing for a while. Um, and then he came back pretty much just to die. And I was sad as hell. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, for all the things that took place in England and he was just trying to kill himself time after time and every time he tried to kill himself is it, like, um, if you want to say Odin is like, no, not yet. You know what I'm saying? And he wanted to, to, to kill himself because for some, for some reason, you know what I'm saying, I, I wanted more out of Ragnar I wanted more he's done enough and I was sad that he died in the series but I wanted some I wanted him to die an old man an old old man like I'm talking about like not like how he went out but I wanted him to 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 be wise enough to to talk to his sons you know what I'm saying and get them all together to work together to to whatever go raid whatever but I didn't want to see him die because he was just my guy you know what I'm saying? I know that death comes to all. But at the same time, I really do believe that if he had stayed in Kattegat and not gone to England, he would have survived. He would have survived the show. You know what I mean? Um, but he was so tormented by everything that was going on. You know what I'm saying? That's why, you know what I'm saying, King uh, um, Eckbert could just... King, King Eckbert was just so in, enamored with him because he's like, yo, this dude... He's a great man. He's a great leader. He's a great king. You know what I mean? So you, it's like he went to see him die and he's like, you don't even understand what you just did. You don't even understand what you just, you don't understand what you just killed. You know what I'm saying? And the, the battle in this show too, that I love is the perspective from, from a Christian point of view and from a Vikings, you know, Norse, um, Norse point of view. You know what I'm saying? Like the different gods and, you know, if they can come to some agreement and stuff like that. It's just a whole plethora of things that just happen in the show that I really, really love. And that's why Vikings is going to get a high score in my book. You know what I'm saying? And the, rewatch, the rewatchability is going to be very high for me because I would love to go back and just experience some of those moments of stuff leading up to those moments. Maybe catch some things that I never caught before that they were probably hinting in episodes before or seasons before of things to happen. Another thing that I'm very disappointed in is that Rolo's story felt incomplete to me. That is just me. It just felt incomplete to me. Like you just come back and be like, oh, Bjorn, I'm your father. And then you, you're just gone again. I mean... I, that's another thing that happened. I think that happened in season five. I don't remember season four or season five. And I was like, why did they even bring him back? Just to what? But I, that part of it was like, you know, and then 
it wasn't even completely clear if if Bjorn is Rolo's son. It wasn't even clear, clear. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't even clear cut because, you know, I think, I I believe I believe he is. I believe that Bjorn is Rolo's son. Um, because Lagatha might as well have just said that. You know what I'm saying? And I think there's hint, hint, nudge, nudge, nudge. <laughs> you know that frustrated the hell out of me because I'm like you're not bringing, you're not, you weren't planning to bring Rolo back at any point. So why? You get what I'm trying to say? Why stir us up like this <laughs> and not outright just say it? You know what I mean? And then the proper response was was definitely had with the interaction between Bjorn and him is like, you're not my father. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, first of all, you're a Christian now, so you definitely not my father. Ragnar is my father. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, so that was a lot it, it was very touching but at the same time it was like why even bring him back about all it just for that like th that that was unnecessary because the reveal was meh as you saw my response when i watched that episode i was like okay you know what i'm saying it was very the reveal was very it was done in a very meh kind of way so i i didn't really rock with it that much but it, it was a cool moment. It was a cool moment, um, you know. And then he just left. He wanted to take Bjorn with him or whatever the situation is. I don't even remember that part of the show, to be honest, because I just kind of... Stuff like that is it's out of sight, out of mind, because it doesn't contribute anything to the story, and it does not... It, it didn't do anything. At least not for me. <laughs> but if it did something for you, kudos. Okay, so, um, as I said, man, there's a lot of moments that I think they could have capitalized on, um, in the, in the final two seasons of the show, and they didn't, you know what I'm saying, they, that kind of completely forgot about certain narratives because they were trying to establish these new characters with the grown-up sons of Ragnar, and I enjoyed it for what it is, I love the character development for Ivar, even though a lot of people think I don't like Ivar because, like, Somebody even accused me in the comment section and said that I turn my brain off whenever Ivar gets on the screen. And I'm like, do you watch me watch this show or you're just commenting on stuff? Because it's just like, I've never said Ivar is a bad character. Never said Ivar was a bad character. I actually, Ivar became one of my favorite alongside Uba. Vitzerk. Not so much. They were trying to do a lot with Vidcirk in, 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 in Season 6 Part 2. They were trying to do a lot with him. It was like, you had all this time to develop his character, and now you're trying to push all of this stuff. It's like, the, the, it, it, it's like it's sped up too much. It's like, do you guys remember in Season 5? In Season 5, Vidcirk was a junkie. And even in the beginning of Season 6, he still kind of fell back into some of those bad behaviors at some times right listen man he killed Lagatha. enough said <laughs> you know what i'm saying enough said bruh i'm just saying people want to excuse certain things oh he sat out into the rain it was like oh it's the first moment that that Vitzerk had um a lot where he's at peace and all this other stuff great for him great for and then he completely just just fixed himself up and everything is good now that's what you call character development <laughs> listen guys listen guys, let me tell y'all something man when you flesh out stories well you don't have to talk about it nobody has to come in a year and, and talk about it you guys have seen me react to great series on this channel if you watch anything other than vikings on my channel you've seen me react you've seen me talk about how you establish storylines how you do these things i've watched enough tv shows i could be a critic of these things i could put in a lot more research into doing these things and do them the way how other people do them i just don't have the time so i just spew all this stuff off the top of how i felt 
and just be completely try to be as objective as possible when it comes on to this guys character development you know i think uh, and i've said this a lot of time while watching anime is like a lot of people in hollywood that write for tv shows and movies they could learn a lot from how anime mangakas write stories they could learn a lot because the the, the cookie cutter things that they do in nowadays it's just not cutting it and a lot of times you know i don't know the story behind why things are maybe rushed in the end i can tell you i can tell you some some of the most disastrous endings in tv show history that i've watched that i'm enjoying the show and then all of a sudden they just completely drop the ball in the final season I could tell you guys, right, a lot of those shows, when you're talking about per perfecting an ending, we're talking about Breaking Bad, perfect ending, I can't find no fault with the ending of Breaking Bad, talking about telling a story, um, beginning with something, and then practically ending with the beginning, you get what I'm saying, so, when I talk about these things, and it's not to throw shots at the people that work hard at the show, I am just being a critic of what I am what I watch because I want to give you guys how I feel authentically about it. Not everybody is going to like what you like just because you like it. it. Life doesn't work like that. I understand that I love Naruto as an anime is my favorite anime of all times. But I understand if a million people don't like Naruto and it's not their favorite of all time. Some people think it's very cheesy. Some people think it's not great. I'm okay with that. I want you guys out there to be okay with me talking about Vikings in this manner. Because I did enjoy the show for what, for what it's worth loved Ube's character. I actually love Ube's character more than I love Ivar's character because Ube actually had character development alongside Ivar as well and actually was acting a lot more like Ragnar, right? Ivar just couldn't come to peace. And then there was just so many convoluted things that just happened where it's just like, I, I don't get it. You get what I'm saying? Like, as I said, I said to you guys at the end of like, I think it was uh, season 6 or like episode 15. And I was like, if this is how the Roos arc ends in this, it's complete trash. It was completely unnecessary to me. Completely unnecessary. Pretty much the only thing that developed from that entire thing was, was basically Ivar having a baby. That was the biggest development out of the entire thing. If you, the, the whole arc was done great, but what I'm talking when I'm talking about is continuity of a story. The whole arc made no sense at all. They fought against Katagat, killed Bjorn. You get what I'm saying? Kill Bjorn. Why they accomplished nothing. The rules accomplished, and then they just took back Ivar with open arms. You would think that King Harold would have took out Ivar, but no. Leave him to get killed in the, what is it, the final episode of the series with some stab wounds. That was the weakest death that I've ever, that I, listen man, that, see, this is what I don't want to do because I don't want to start going on a rant because this is a this is a review. And there's so many things where I said that it just doesn't match up. And I know you guys are probably going to have a different reaction to the show. You might go to enjoy it for what it is. And I get that, but objectively speaking, a lot of that stuff didn't make sense. It did not make sense. It didn't measure up to the first four seasons of the show. The first four seasons of the show had such continuity, it was like I was reading a book. You get what I'm trying to say? It was like I'm reading a book. The references back, you know what I'm saying? You're in season four and you're still seeing references to season one and season two. That's how you write continuity. It's not about 
and I get even with a time skip, you can still do continuity. They messed that up, man. And I don't want to sit here, you know what I'm saying, ranting on and on about how I didn't enjoy the final two seasons. Season 5 was absolute trash, and I've said that multiple times. It was trash. I don't care what you want to say. I don't understand Vikings and yin, 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 and all this. Like, I don't care. I don't care. Go read a book if you want to understand what continuity is and how you write a series. Okay, you see what happened when J&J &J or whatever they call themselves didn't have any source material to write the final season of Game of Thrones because the book hasn't come out yet? That's what you get. Trash. <laughs> okay? No continuity in season 8 and that's why people hated it so much because the decisions were stupid. Why is Bran becoming king? Why is, is, is Daenerys acting just weird? Just all of a sudden, she just rushed into being a mad queen. Now she's like a daddy. All of a sudden. Even if you're going to do that, could you write it a little better? <sighs> Come on, man. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Vikings could have done better with the ending. But overall... Let me tell you guys this. Overall, season one through season six, it was a great series. So I am going to give Vikings a solid eight out of ten. And the reason why I'm doing eight out of ten is because they lose points for those two final seasons, damn it. <laughs> they lose points. One point each for those two final seasons. So eight out of ten, I think it's still a great rating. You know what I'm saying? It's not average. It's way above average, right? So it's somewhere in the three, three quarter range, <laughs> if you want to call it that. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, man. So as I said, I don't want to sit here harping too long, too much longer, on what this show represents and what how it meant. There was just so many things, and I don't want to go through them all pace by pace as I remember them. Um, the things that happened. The best thing about Season 6 Part 1 was Lagatha's death. Um, I think that was the most, the best death in the, in, te, in the best filmed death in the series. It was done very well. It's better than Bjorn. It's better than Ragnar's. Um, Ragnar's death was very eerie. It was very eerie. I felt like I was losing a dad. And the things that he was saying before he was dropped into the snake pit... Um, resonated with me. It resonated with me, um, you know what I'm saying, of, you know, how a badass should go out. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just one of those things where, where I was looking at it and I, and I was like, yo, I would love to make a speech like that before <laughs> before I go. You know what I'm saying? Um, the Valkyries will summon me home. You know what I'm saying? Like, some crazy stuff like that. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> um Great stuff, man. It was an enjoyable experience to watch Vikings. As I said, 8 out of 10. You know what I'm saying? If they had done the final two seasons right, this would have been an easy 10 out of 10 for me. Um, so we'll see um, what will happen in, you know what I'm saying, when it comes on to The Last Kingdom. That is next up on the block as in, you know, the the show that is portraying, you know, something in the vein of Vikings and the war between Vikings and England and or Wessex, if you want to call it that. So whenever that show ends, I know season five, if, if season five was going to be the last season of The Last Kingdom, they would have announced it and said it's the last season. But I don't think it's going to be the last season because the show is still very much popular I don't know what they're going to do in season um, five of The Last Kingdom, but I'm looking forward to it. Hope you guys are looking forward to it, too. Anyways, guys, that is all I have to say about Vikings, the Vikings review, and I hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. If you don't like what I have to say, hey, there's a button for that, too. It's called the dislike button. You can hit that one, too. But anyways, I'd rather you hit the like button, though. So hit that. 
Let me know what you think in the comment section of what I was saying. If you agreed, if you disagreed, you can put it in the comment section. All opinions are welcomed here. Just don't be rude. Don't call me names and stuff like that. And I will respond to you. I'll even heart your comment because you have a difference in opinion. But just don't be rude. Don't call me a, a dunce. Don't don't call me names. You get what I'm saying? Because it's unnecessary. I don't call you a damn fool because you think that this stuff is it was good and cool. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't think so. I'm just saying, just don't be, don't be rude. I don't want to have to delete your comments. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to have to cuss you out in the comment section, man. Okay? So just, you can bring your point across and be respectful. You can do that. I know you can. I know all of you guys are intelligent enough to do that. Just don't come and be like, I hate it, and then you're gone. Explain why you hate what I said. You know what I'm saying? We good? All right. You know what to do. Subscribe if you're new. On to the next. Let's get it, man. I'm out. Terabyte Reacts. Peace.